Hello, I'm Hassan Damaluji, co-founder of Global Nation. And in this week's Global Cooperation Update, I look at what a second Trump term would mean for internationalists. If they didn't take it seriously last time, they definitely do now. People everywhere are now contemplating another Trump term. And it may not happen, but like Raid in Seattle, I've learned it's worth preparing for. What then would Trump 2.0 mean for people around the world committed to fighting challenges like climate change, pandemics, war and inequality? Trump never missed an opportunity in his first term to rail against the international system, stating in his first presidential speech at the UN, we reject the ideology of globalism. He withdrew the US from the Paris Agreement on climate change, WHO, UNESCO and the Human Rights Council. He refused to join the COVAX scheme that tried and failed to vaccinate the world's poorest countries as quickly as the rich. And those organisations were all badly weakened, but did hobble on. Would a second Trump term be enough to send the multilateral system into freefall? Political prediction is difficult. And trying to predict what life under Donald Trump will bring, even from one day to the next, let alone over a four year period, would fool the smartest quantum computer. Working with Trump's first White House left you lost for words. Governments come and go, some with policies you may like, others less so, but there's usually a reasonable assumption when talking to senior government officials of any country, let alone the world's most powerful, that someone somewhere knows what on earth is going on. And uniquely, in my experience, certainly, this was not the case in the Trump administration first time around. No one knew what was happening, nor what would happen at any point in time. Only two things were consistent. Firstly, the level of eye-popping chaos. And secondly, the near-perfect match between the external media-driven picture of a clown show in the White House and the real clown show that was going on behind the scenes. It really was that bad. This is already an important point in trying to understand what Trump 2.0 might look like. And it suggests that some recent analysis may be off the mark. Narrative has formed that Trump's second term will be distinguished from its first by the disciplined implementation of policies that have been patiently designed in the Biden years with meticulous, ruthless preparation. According to The Economist, a professional core of America first populists are dedicating themselves to ensuring that Trump too will be disciplined and focused on getting things done. This narrative asserts that the Trump second term would be more dangerous than its first because its organization would be more organized and consist only of loyalists. And that he will achieve this by replacing up to 50,000 uh, officials with political appointees to stop pesky moralists getting in the way of his policies. Well, perhaps, but these carefully laid plans for Trump's second term aren't Trump's plans. They're the noisy efforts of Trump supporting think tanks to push their vision on the world. And you can be sure that Trump has not read the thousands of pages they've published, uh, nor even watched a TikTok video summarizing them. Remember Steve Bannon's vision for Trump's first term? Those plans were dead in eight months. And all that talk about how his administration would eventually settle down into something more stable after the fire and fury of the first year. Trump's backers have tried to explain his behavior as an unpredictability doctrine, but careful academic study of his policy choices has revealed that they really were irrational from beginning to end. So do not bet that those trying to channel and control a man who just released a new brand of sneakers the day after being fined $350 million for lying about his business affairs would do any better at reining in the Donald than the adults in the room did in round one. It was sheer incompetence that prevented Trump from wrecking the international system first time round. And that incompetence is likely to persist. If he does attempt to replace 50,000 civil servants with his cronies, that's likely to increase the level of, of chaos. In the first four years of his term, already with the normal number of uh, political appointees, many of them were still not filled uh, even by the end of uh, his time in the White House. It's hard to imagine that a mass sacking like the one currently being discussed would lead to an administration better able to impose its ideas on an unwilling world. More likely, disorder would be multiplied. Now, does that mean that another round of incompetent government would mean that Trump's second term would be harmless? Not at all. Real damage was done to the world by America's erratic leadership from 2017 to 2020. Perhaps most of all in connection with the COVID-19 pandemic.
A responsible United States that stood up for fairness and multilateralism could have helped ensure that vaccines were equally distributed, saving countless lives and building faith in the international system. And if Trump wins another term, the first international casualty will be Ukraine, which will lose its most powerful defender. Incompetence alone is not a reliable barrier against destructive forces. Trump's clear intention is to make it harder for the world to collaborate, and there's no guarantees that he'll fail. But the truth is that Trump was not and will not be as much of a rupture as many people think. Words matter, it's true. And Obama's words were as beautiful as Trump's are vulgar. An academic study of both presidents' tweets has found that every single one of Obama's studied contributed to reinforcing American soft power, while two thirds of Trump's eroded it. But actions matter more than those words. And when it comes to actions on the global stage, there's been more continuity than dissonance over different American administrations. Obama, he of the Cairo speech, deployed armies of drones to carry out 10 times as many extrajudicial killings as George W. Bush. And Trump may have made headlines with the Muslim travel ban, but it was Obama's team who had drawn up the list of seven Muslim majority countries and began to impose restrictions on them, some of which affected me. Biden, in turn, has continued with many of Trump's international policies. He may have returned the US to the Paris Agreement, but he's issued more drilling licenses for hydrocarbons than Trump ever did. Both Trump and Biden have given Israel carte blanche to ignore international law. Both have placed trade restrictions on China, and both have infuriated their European allies with economic protectionism. An angrier, less confident, mercantilist America one that is less willing to collaborate and lead is a reality that Trump did not create. Nor would his defeat in, America in November reverse it. A second Trump term, with all the vitriol, chaos and attacks on multilateralism, may speed up a long running process, but it's naive to believe in the counterfactual. In other words, when Biden announced that America is back, it wasn't. Nothing Trump did has shattered American moral authority in the world like the current administration, sending billions of dollars in military aid to a country carrying out slaughter on an unimaginable scale against an occupied, vulnerable civilian population while its government is on trial for genocide in the world's highest courts. All power is built on winning the narrative battle. Military battles can only tidy the edges of political authority. And the narrative is slipping away from a country that has lost the ability to tell stories about itself that feel respective and inclusive to the rest of the world. American hegemony is eroding. And in this long process, Trump is just a quiver in the long downward trajectory. But squint hard and there is a silver lining. Off in the distance, as the old 20th century world order falters, its imperial center gradually crumbling, vaguely perceptible, through the storm clouds lies a better world. The Economist frets that if Trump to win another term, America would become just another big power. Now, to believers in America's essential benevolence, this is an awful prospect. But in reality, it's a necessary condition for true multilateralism to emerge. The transition from hegemony to multipolarity is fraught with dangers, but it's also an extraordinary opportunity. No hegemonic power can ever be expected to build a fair world. Fairness in politics has always been a hard-won compromise by peers who recognize they can't run roughshod over each other. The idea of an American uh, hegemony that's benevolent is just as uh, misguided as a belief in a benevolent British empire. In the end, Pax Americana may have benefits, but it's a cul-de-sac. Germany and Japan are pillars of multilateralism precisely because they do not anymore have imperial pretensions. They are both just another big power, and they know they're stronger because of their alliances, both regional and global. They back the UN and support decisions taken by consensus. The UK and France, for all their imperial baggage, are good actors on the international stage precisely to the extent that they accept their role as middling countries, and they are bad actors precisely to the extent that they do not. An end to American hegemony does not need to be an end to liberal values, democracy, and international cooperation to solve humanity's problems. In fact, 
It's the only way to restore the moral authority that a bitter, declining hegemony is eroding. America, as just another big power, would have to work harder to court allies. It would have to listen more to both friends and foes. The irony about America firsters is that they are hastening a world in which they are forced to act more multilaterally. When Europe and Japan have finished their rapid rearming, when the Middle East has completed its pivot to Asia, and when American credibility is further eroded by populist actions, whether dressed as America first or America is back, the occupant of the White House will increasingly find the need to knock politely when asking for favours. Then it may find the UN more useful than it does now. It may slowly begin as just another big power to see protection for itself in seeking compromise. Here's hoping. And that's this week's update from me, Hassan Dan.